Hi everyone. So in today's video, we'll be understanding what exactly is code splitting and what benefit does it provide as a React developer. So before I begin, as I always say, if you are planning to learn any new technology, you should always ask the why. Why exactly do we even need to learn that particular technology, or why do we even need to understand that specific logic? So let's go ahead and answer that question. Why do we exactly need code splitting? So as React developers, we build projects on a day-to-day -day basis. And the issue with these projects is that they can have multiple routes, let's say 20, 30, or even with huge scale applications, there can be around 50 routes. And by routes, what I mean is slash home, slash about, slash contact us, and a lot of other routes. So as you know, as you might already know that in React, everything that you see on the screen gets rendered using JavaScript. So Initially, you're served with an empty HTML file and a JavaScript file. And everything that you see on your screen is built using the JavaScript file or is rendered using the JavaScript file. So uh, with a, in an application with multiple routes, say 30, 40, 50 routes, this main JavaScript file that is being sent from the server to the client can get very big in size. It can be in MBs and for a browser, it can take some time to fetch that particular JavaScript file. And this for the user might result in a lot of delay in loading the application. And as per stats, it is not really a good idea to make your user wait for seeing your application or see the first look of your application. It is a huge performance issue. So there is definitely a need to resolve this thing and basically reduce the size of your JavaScript file. Now, how exactly do you go ahead and do that? So to resolve this issue, React team came up with the idea of code splitting. Now, what exactly does code splitting do? So code splitting is the idea of basically dividing the JavaScript files of your components into different chunks and load them as and when required. So we'll better understand this when we see an example. So let's go ahead and deep dive into the code and let's see how code splitting works in general. I have this application in front of me. This application currently only consists of two pages. One of the pages home page that is the slash route. And then there's another page with on a route called another page. Okay. So if I go back to the home page and I reload the entire application, let me clear this and let me reload the entire application. If I reload this, you'll see that the current size of the bundle is 430 kilobytes and this might not be a very big size because this is like a very simple application but when you get on to building actual projects this can go up to mbs and that will be a huge performance hit on your entire application and currently we are only fetching one javascript file and that javascript file contains the code for both home page and another page so if if you carefully notice when i click on another page nothing in terms of javascript gets fetched because the code required to render this particular component was also present in this bundle.js file that initially came. So as a user, if you try and understand, I came first to the home page and I don't really need to fetch the code of another page because I'm not going to that particular page. So the react team came up with the idea of code splitting and using code splitting, what you can do is you can divide the code of your components into different chunks. So in our case, we can basically separate the code of home page and another page and load another page only when our user starts visiting another page. And the benefit of code splitting is that once you load a specific JavaScript file, it is cached on the client side. And every time the user goes back to that particular page again, they won't have to do that fetching again. The, the JavaScript code for that particular page will be served from the cache. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. If you go to the official documentation of React, there's something called lazy that's let, that lets you do this. And we'll see how exactly we can implement code splitting using lazy. So let's go ahead and jump into the code of that application that I uh, presented right now. So it is a normal React application with React router setup. And I currently have two routes. One route is slash and, the another, and another route is another page or let's for simplicity give this route a name let's call it about and on slash route we are rendering this particular component that is called home page 
and inside home page we are simply reading a uh, rendering a text called home page and then there is a link component that basically redirects the user to the other page let's call it about over here as well so let's rename this over here as well let's call this about page so whenever a user clicks on this they'll be redirected to about page and on about page we are rendering this particular component let me quickly rename this as well let's call this uh, about page just one second about page and let me fix this everywhere so here it is about page and here we can call this about page yeah so on slash about route we will basically navigate the user to about page and there we are we will basically render the text called about page all right let's rename this here as well this will be called about page so yeah these are the only two routes in our application slash and about on slash we render home page on about we render about page and to make the code of about page heavy or like big in size what i have done is i have created temporary objects okay these objects just contain my social media detail so if you want to follow me on linkedin or github you can basically do that on these links and you can even reach out to me over email so yeah these objects basically just contain temporary data and these are like thousands of lines of code so they basically are total like 7000 lines of code and this makes this entire file huge in size now what i want to do is i want to separate out the code of this particular page now currently as i already showed you that whenever we load this particular uh, application the code for both these pages is fetched in one javascript file and that the size of that particular javascript file is 430 kb so even if i uh, go to about page nothing really gets fetched now how exactly we can go, how exactly do we go ahead and use this lazy in our code so the process is very simple you simply import lazy from react so let's quickly do that we import it lazy from react and instead of importing your component directly what you do is you import it using lazy so you basically save the result in a variable and what you do is you basically load this result using lazy so if you want you can even go to the official documentation and follow this so as this is like an easy, very easy example you can even go here and copy paste this if you don't want to follow along so yeah you can basically so do something like this and you can rename let's rename this to about page and we are loading our code from slash component uh, slash components slash about page so yeah so when you are using lazy you are supposed to load your components like this now the code of about page is stored in this particular component now the thing is since we are not loading the code for about page by default in our javascript file there might be a chance that when the user clicks on about page on uh, on this particular screen on home page when they click on this link tag and they plan to go to about page there might be a case that this loading can take some time and fetching of this about page might take some time and in that case we wouldn't want our user to see like a empty screen so for that react team came up with another thing called suspense so what suspense does is while your lazy component is getting loaded uh, sorry this is not supposed to go here this is supposed to wrap this particular component just one second yeah so while your react code is while your uh, lazy component is loading what they'll do is they'll display this fallback component and this fallback component could be a circular loader or a progress indicator or anything like that and when the loading of this lazy component is completed then they'll render this particular page so let's go ahead and test this out i'll quickly save all these screens and if i go to our application now and i reload this you will see that earlier the bundle size of our entire application was around 430 kb but now it has reduced to 426 kb and now when i click on the go to about uh, link button when i click on this you will see that the about component got fetched separately you can see over here this is titled source of components about chunk.js in production this will be given a random name so you don't have to worry about that react will take care of that but yeah 
the main focus is that the about component code or the javascript file related to the about component got fetched separately and it wasn't fetched with the main bundle now if you implement this in any of your projects you can already imagine how much performance uh, improvement this will provide you with because all the routes of your application will be fetched separately and only the initial slash route or the home page of your application can be served in your main.js file that way any user who will go and visit your application the initial code that is required to be seen on the screen will be fetched first and then as and when they go on to other pages the uh, data for all those components will be fetched and the best part about this is now this component is cached so if i go to about page again you can see this is not being served uh, this is not being fetched again this is being served from the cache so there won't be any fetching again so you can go across navigate in your application and once the route is fetched it will be served from cache and there won't be any loading issues so this is how the lazy component in react works now let's try and understand what exactly is the use of suspense over here so since we are fetching the code for about page separately there is a slight chance that the code for this particular page might get fetched with some delay and during that time we don't want our users to see an empty screen so what suspense does is while the code for this particular page is being fetched it displays this particular fallback component or whatever component you uh, you want to send in here that component will be displayed as a fallback component currently we are simply showing a loading text so while the code for about page is getting fetched the user will basically see loading text now you can either wrap your entire code with the suspense component and this way uh, all the routes that will be lazy loaded will basically uh, hand will basically be handled with suspense and they'll all be on all those particular pages that same loading state will be shown or you can design specific loaders for your specific routes and wrap them with separate suspense so this these are two ways you can handle this you can either wrap that specific route or you can wrap your entire application with a suspense the ideal way or how most developers go is with uh, wrapping their entire application with one suspense and showing a generic loading component so let's go ahead and see this in action as well so i have this temporary function you don't need to understand this uh, i you mostly have an idea of promises so i won't go ahead and explain this particular function but what this function basically does is is it delays the promise delays any promise that is being submitted to it by 2 seconds so we can go ahead and we can basically wrap this import statement because this is an asynchronous operation so we'll basically wrap this with a with our custom function and now what will happen is the code for about page will get fetched but will be fetched with a delay of 2 seconds so we'll be able to see this fallback component in action so let's go ahead and see this uh i'll go to previous page let me zoom in a bit and let me clear this and when i reload the application the initial bundle size is 426 kilobytes and when i go to about page uh observe carefully that first we get to see a loading state and then the about page is getting rendered and we also see code splitting over here so this is what suspense does suspense basically shows a fallback ui while the code for your code splitted component is being fetched So this is how you can utilize code splitting in your application and basically divide the code for all your routes and sub routes into separate javascript chunks and reduce the overall size of your main bundle and that will like increase the performance of your entire application by a huge amount and let me quickly go and show you the example that the react team shows so they haven't uh, given an example wherein they they are display they are basically fetching a separate page what they are doing is they are basically rendering they are basically lazy loading a component within a component so this is also how you can use uh, the use lazy api of react so this way if there is a component in your page that is that forms some heavy computation or that is like very heavy uh, in terms of ui then what you can do is you can load that component lazily and let the other components render on your screen and that component can render on your screen lazily and while that is getting loaded you can so show some sort of shimmer or some sort of loader so this is how you can also utilize this lazy api of react team so i'll quickly show you a demo as well so as you can see uh, this entire page 
only this part in this entire page only this particular component was lazy loaded and the rest of the things were there on the screen so this is also how you can make use of the lazy api uh, and i hope the things i hope things were clear and i hope you make your react applications more performant using this particular technique uh, do let me know if you have any doubts in the comment section and also if you have requests for some specific videos or specific topics do let me know about that as well in the comments i'll see you in the next one thank you